I was raised in a kind of cool way that just really was where the seeds of adventure were planted in me, you know, just the realization that I could go climb up these mountains. Just that, you know, realization that, wait a minute, you know, it connected a lot of things for me. There's two deer I shot, opening morning, iron sights, long range, hard shots. And that sort of set my standard, which I've since not always consistently met. I um, realized that I had certain skills with a rifle that right. I wasn't even fully aware of, but if I could do that offhand, it cemented oh a lot of gosh. things for me. That is a huge deer. Welcome to Eastman's. Today I have a special treat for you. One of my really good friends, Glenn Eberly, and I are down here in Southern Colorado and we're gonna go on a mule deer hunt. You've seen me go on mule deer hunts before down here, but this is a unique situation. Number one, they've had a lot of moisture. Number two, it's Clint Everly, one of the most interesting men in the world. Well, there's a lot of people to go I've heard Glenn is really neat. I've heard he's got some really cool <laughs> stories and some really cool history. And where did the Everly Stock brand come from? You know, we're sitting in your showroom here in Boise, Idaho. But let's talk, before we get into the Everly Stock brand, because that is obviously part of the Glenn Everly story, but it's sure. not its not the full story. I, I have a great memory of being a little kid. I mean, it's roaring around. I, I, I had a hell-raising cool childhood, and I really have great memories of it because I was lucky to live in a little tiny town in the mountains and, and have free run day and night of the place. So I was raised in a kind of cool way that just turned me loose early on, which I think this, that that really was where the seeds of adventure were planted in me, you know, just the realization that I could go climb up these mountains or just some of the, like, there was a place that we called the, uh, I think we called it the time tunnel, but uh, about the size of these pipes overhead, there was a culvert that came out of the side of the mountain down below I-70. Okay. And it came way down this fall and we'd go with flashlights and, and climb up into that thing and, go, and the challenge was to go all the way up through the top and cross into I-70. There was like a water culvert in the middle and then you'd go to the other side and then you come back. When you came back for the downhill run, you'd turn on the flashlight and be sliding down the, the inside You're of this culvert. You're me. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, so in some ways, you know, it made me a brave young boy and yeah. uh but also just that spark of uh and thrill of the unknown and adventure and you know that came on early on and i, I started camping the mountains when i was a you know single digit you know six yeah. seven eight year old and yeah and on from there so. Soon after, started shooting guns and learning how, learning what that was about. Really, with my dad early on. I think, uh, in fact, yeah. When I think think about it, we moved there when I was twelve, and there was a hunting culture in McCall. Um, and and Dad had bought a ranch down in the Salmon River country, and so uh, he had this old thirty forty crag, hard kicking son of a gun oh, for a little a kid. Mule. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but he taught me how to shoot that thing. And then when I was fourteen, he took me deer hunting on the ranch one you know early fall morning and the first time with a you know high caliber rifle in my mm -hmm. hand going for game and but a really nice rifle for taking a beat on something and so that story was that first morning i'm walking across this meadow and i see these two mule deer skylined about 300 yards above me and i was like oh man they're going uphill and and i knew you know 14 year old kid i knew that if i didn't take a shot then i was never going to see him again so right. i thought i'm well i might as well so i just in instinctively figured out well it's an up angle shot so if i put my the, the bead covered the deer right because it's 300 yards <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. and so the bead covers the deer and, and i'm like well i lift up some amount and I'm like that's about right and pull the trigger and that deer turns around and runs and i'm like oh, i must have missed him so i the other one's still standing there so i do the same thing i go beat on him pull up a little bit pull the trigger he runs I'm like ah oh, darn i must have missed both so i climb up to the top of the mountain and there's a deer lying there I'm like holy crap i yell across the valley my dad was across the valley yep. climbing up the other side of the mountain with my my kid brother 
and go, Dad, I got one. And then, it, you know, as I'm trying to figure out what to do with this dead deer lying there, I'm like, wait a minute. And I stand up and I look down the hill and the other one's lying in the fence down there. Oh, know? my so gosh. Both heart shots. You're kidding me. First two deer I shot, opening morning iron sights, long range heart shots. And that sort of set my standard, which I've since not always consistently met, you know, yeah. but, I, but I've, you know, it was, it was actually kind of cool because my brother had a tag and poor kid, he had to use his tag on my deer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, it was also just that, uh, uh, you know, realization that, wait a minute, you know, it connected a lot of things for me. I, um, realized that I had certain skills with a rifle that right. I wasn't even fully aware of, but if I could do that offhand and accurately, and, and really, I, I can still remember crystalline memory of how steady it all was and how, you know, how cool my head was. And Oh my you gosh. Know, yeah, that is kinda, a huge confidence starter. Yeah, exactly. It really was. For, yeah. for a lot of things in your life yeah. now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I guess, one reason why the story comes out is that it sort of, it cemented a lot of things for me. So we've been friends for roughly 15 years. Um, you started Everly Stock, not quite as a pack company though. It's known for its packs now. I mean, that's what your brand is really known for. You guys are branching out and other stuff. What did you start Everly Stock as? Well, it was once called the Everly Stock Company. That's and that's where the word Everly Stock came from. So my last name's Everly and had a stock company. And I did the sport of biathlon where you ski oh. and shoot. Yep. That's right, and, that's uh, right. And uh, was on the national team in the 80s, a long, long time ago. Uh, dur during which time I, being an American, you know, and we're innovative and pushing the envelope and things, and uh, I changed the rifle considerably for the, that was used for the sport. It used to be heavy and broke really easily, and I made a, a really strong rifle stock that was also an awful lot lighter. And then we showed, the American team showed the world that you could shoot a lightweight rifle stock as accurately or more accurately really than the things that we've been carrying. And, and we could ski a heck of a lot faster with the light, lighter uh, guns that, that uh, I developed. And uh, that really changed the sport of biathlon. So we found the buck the night before on the way back to camp. We were hoping we didn't have to use Glenn's Olympic shooting skills to make a play on this buck. We were just hoping that he would still be in the same spot the next morning. Again, if you can. Yep. Yeah, he's done. Perfect. Holy smokes, Glenn! <laughs> oh my gosh! That's awesome. I can, that is a huge deer. <laughs> Colorado produces again. <laughs> oh man. Look, you're going to shoot a mule deer. That's the one. That's the one. If you're going to shoot a typical oh trash factor buck, that's how you do it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Glenn, I appreciate you coming, joining us on this unbelievable hunt. Um, mule deer in Colorado, one of my favorite things to do. We haven't been on a hunt in a long time, and this has been absolutely a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Really awesome to, for me to have been able to come in here and do this with you. Thanks for bringing me. Yeah, and to culminate it with a buck like this is just, amazing. You just can't ask yeah. for anything better, and it just worked out. Yeah, he's like the coolest deer ever. Yeah, really feel good about it. That's awesome. Thank you. It's it's really neat to watch, you know, over the course of our our friendship and our partnership, to watch it grow and change, and you know the evolution of it. And it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it's been one of my uh, crown jewels when I'm laying on a deathbed I'll be like ah, I knew that guy I knew <laughs> <Yeah>. that guy <laughs> but you've had you've had a really interesting history 
Um, everything from biathlon, which is skiing and shooting, you know, two things combined, and all the way into Air Force pilot and commercial pilot. And uh, now, you, now you fly your own planes and have, you know, I, I, if you haven't got on Instagram and follow Glenn Dew because it's very entertaining to watch his adventures and, and yeah. you do a lot of adventures. Yeah. I'm and, very and, jealous. And that's a good word, but it's a word I, 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 I won't say I consciously employ, but I kind of do. I love the spirit of adventure. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I have really for my entire adult life, I just that spark of, of excitement about, yeah. you know, going around the corner. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a neat way to live.